So far in this mini series, we've crafted and completed a unique cover using an image from my digital kit Lives Remembered for our grungy vintage junk journal. Today, we're moving inside, selecting the perfect materials to create our signatures. From beautiful fabrics and papers to unique vintage ephemera, we've got a lot to choose from. It's time to make this journal come to life from the inside out. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So if you've missed how we've gotten to this point, please see the first two episodes of this mini series linked below. My inspiration for this journal and now specifically for the inside of the journal were two of my previous journals. One is this little one, which I made recently. It is a design team project for the Digital Collage Club. I love this little jeans journal so, so much. You can also find videos for this journal linked below. I also show you how I made this fun closure. The cover, almost all of these signatures. So there's a lot of inspiration in that video, I believe. And I want this style to be a mix with uh, this bigger one, <laughs> which is of course my book that I made in the Keeper of Memory course that I took in person with Alex Ferrero Castro here in Vienna, Austria. So this book is dedicated to the love story of my parents. These are my parents down here. And as you can see, the inspiration here for adding this paintbrush came from Alex's course because Alex loves adding dimensional pieces on the cover, specifically vintage pieces that she finds at flea markets, which is exactly what I did here. And then on the inside, it is super, super grungy. So I do definitely want some grunge, but I also want to mix this journal up with a few, let's say, more fun, maybe a little modern elements and not go quite as grungy as I have gone in this one. So you can also find videos of this and also parts of the course that I took that I filmed with Alex's permission linked below. So this was an exceptional experience which has inspired me in so many ways for so many projects. I will be forever grateful to Alex for this experience. So now let me show you some of the materials I want to use. So I will be using some fabrics. I got some beautiful Tim Holtz fabrics here from wonderful Martina and this is also my way of thanking you, Martina, for these beautiful fabrics because I can't find our correspondence to thank you. So please, vielen, vielen Dank für diese Stoffe von der Romy, von Quilting for You. So Martina visited Romy's store, which is the Quilting for You store that I have linked several times in the past. It's obviously a quilting fabric store and Romy has the most incredible fabrics. I will again link Romy's store for you below. She doesn't only have Tim Holtz fabrics, but you'll see a couple of other ones. And there's just so many beautiful ones to choose from. And Martina visited her in Germany, which I have not had the pleasure of doing yet. And Martina was so kind to send me some fabrics from Romy. I mean, I am just over the moon. So all of these are from Martina, nochmal herzlichen Dank, this is super süß. And this one here I've actually never had before. It's absolutely gorgeous, it's called Documentation. And I think this one will work so, so well with this paper kit, Lives Remembered, because look how great these colors go together. It has this beautiful rust in here and it will just pair absolutely seamlessly with these papers. So thank you so much, Martina. And I also wanted to show you an envelope that Martina sent just for inspiration for you. So she took an old handwritten letter. She collaged on the front. I just love this so much. 
And then she made an envelope out of it by folding it up, gluing it together, and just cutting this tip off here. Or is it folded? Oh, it's actually folded up. And I've never seen that before, and I am so in love with this idea. So maybe something you would like to try as well. Martina, thank you also so much for your sweet letter. So I'm definitely going to be using this documentation fabric. And then these are some other ones I'm considering to use. So this one is called Fractured Mosaic. Tim Holtz, this is the one that we used in the inside here, which I'm so in love with. Added some gold splatters here, by the way, which are kind of hard to see. Then I'm considering to use this one, also Tim Holtz. This is called Portland Street. That would like totally mix up the vibe and the colors. Beautiful contrast. Tim Holtz, this one is called Subway Signs. Love this one. This one is called Urban Grunge. Not totally sure about this one yet, but it might just work with vibes here. And also with the papers here. I think, yeah, I think it would go pretty well. It might be a bit unexpected, which is perfect. This one here is, of course, called London Gridlock. This is the one that I have on my cover here on the outside. And then there's two fabrics here which are not Tim Holtz. These are from Marcia Dursey. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's from the same shop, Quilting For You. And this is one. I just love this. How cool is this fabric? Look at this, amazing, so in love. Oh, maybe I should tell you the name, it's called Postcards. And finally, we have this one. I've used this in another journal. It looks super colorful, but it also has some parts that are less colorful. So this here is super colorful, but when you look here, it doesn't have as many colors. And this one as well is more grunge than colors. It's from the same fabric. This is also by Maria Dursey and it's called Treasure Hunt. And this one is canvas material, which I totally love. So Marcia has a bunch of absolutely fabulous fabrics as well. So go check those out if you're interested. Then I chose some more sturdy papers. These here are left over from previous projects. I used my bubble dyeing technique. Again, I will share that video below in case you have not seen how I do this. You can do it in a grungy version like this, but you can also just do it with some fun colors to have, let's say, some more happy pages <laughs> for your journal. Then I have some watercolor paper here. This is just dyed with coffee. This came from experiments with eco-dyeing. As you can see, the plants didn't really come out well, but I love these washers. Not sure if I'm going to use this paper. This was also a result of some paper dyeing with plants and some rusty objects, super, super grungy. Then there's some more watercolor papers just dyed with coffee and we have this one this is also watercolor paper i don't know what happened to this <laughs> it looks very different to this one maybe this was tea i really don't remember these are just regular papers dyed with coffee and then i took out some pieces of vintage file folders that i think might work well for this project i love this one this is the last piece i have left over then i chose some vintage documents vintage music sheets original oh there's some thread here just original vintage ephemera things that i figured i could collage with 
and little there's really really gorgeous ephemera here I don't know how much of it I will use I have been hoarding these if I use any of these I think I'll be happy and sad at the same time <laughs> Happy because I finally used them. Sad because I used them. Just some German book pages. Do you know that feeling? A vintage crossword puzzle. <laughs> Sewing pattern. Some beautiful handmade wrapping paper. Random pieces, more wrapping paper. Beautiful vintage flashcards. Love these. Another vintage envelope. Mathematical book page. When I was back in school, something like this would have given me total anxiety because I was really bad at math. Vintage map. Just a beautiful vintage fuzzy paper that I was gifted. More vintage map. This is a sleeve from some photo something. This I think was also to put in your film to get it developed. Vintage shorthand. This is a beautiful waxed paper that I found at a thrift store and I believe this is my last piece. I could cry. Beautiful vintage envelope piece of an envelope, beautiful German ledger paper, beautiful technical paper. I do have digitals of these. I will link those for you below as well. And then I have these prints. So as I mentioned in the previous videos, these are printed smaller than 50%. So I printed these two on one sheet Plus, I shrunk it down to 80%. So you can find that kit linked below as well. And I also printed two of these pages on transparency in full size. So let me show you those. So here's one. How gorgeous is this? Like printing on transparencies is just magical. And then I printed another one which is this one. So fun, so gorgeous. I do plan on cutting these up. And just as a hint, in case you're not experienced with printing on transparencies, first of all, never lay them on top of each other because they might stick together. Let me show you what I use. This, I believe, is a German brand, Avery. They're just overhead transparencies made for inkjet. In my case, they're A4. 10 sheets in a pack. They are quite expensive. This is the number 2503. And only one of the sides are printable. So you always have to really pay attention to which side you print on because if you print on the wrong side, your ink will smear and it will never ever dry. So that will be a catastrophe. And once you've printed these, you really need to let them dry. It says in the instructions, 15 minutes, but I think it's better to do at least half an hour, but I think it's totally worth the wait. Oh, and I also want to mention that I have a creepy Halloween version of this set. It totally creeps me out. I don't even know if I can manage to do a journal with it because I really think they are creepy, but I will link them for you down below. If you're into creepy, you might want to have a look at those. <laughs> So join me and get your materials ready for the next mini episode and we'll start cutting and tearing up some papers and start creating some unique grungy vintage signatures. Love you guys. Mwah. Mwah.